guys welcome back to channel the dimensions of anatomy myself dr aravind and we will be discussing the anatomy of corpus callosum in this video in our last video we discussed the different types of white matter of cerebrum the different fibers, the association fibers, the commissural fibers, the projection fibers, what they are, the examples of each types of fibers, all these things we saw in our last class. If you haven't watched that, do watch it now. The link is now available on the screen and is also available on the description. And in that class, we saw that our corpus callosum is a type of commissural fiber or is one of the commissural fibers in fact it is the largest commissural fiber and it connects the two cerebral hemispheres across it connects the two cerebral hemispheres across all the parts of the two cerebral hemispheres except the lower and anterior parts of the temporal lobes the corpus callosum connects the entire two cerebral hemispheres across except the lower and anterior parts of temporal lobes which are connected by the anterior commission. Coming to the parts of corpus callosum, this one here marked in red is the corpus callosum and it is divided into four parts the rostrum the genu the body and the splenium so the corpus callosum consists of four parts the rostrum the genu the body and the splenium. The genu is the anterior end of corpus callosum. Genu, genu means bent and this bend here is called the genu and it is the anterior end of corpus callosum. It is related anteriorly to the anterior cerebral arteries and posteriorly to the anterior horn of lateral ventricle. I have already done a class on lateral ventricle. If you haven't watched that, you can watch it. The link is now available on the screen and also provided in the description. Okay, coming back to our corpus callosum. The genu is the anterior end and it is related anteriorly to the anterior cerebral artery and posteriorly to the anterior horn of lateral ventricle. The rostrum runs downwards and backwards from genu and ends by joining the lamina terminalis in front of the anterior Commission. The rostrum runs downwards and backwards from the genu and ends by joining the lamina terminalis just in front of anterior commission. It is related superiorly to the anterior horn of lateral ventricle. Coming to the body, this region here is the body of corpus callosum the region of corpus callosum between the genu and splenium is called the body of corpus callosum the region between the genu which forms the anterior end and splenium which forms the posterior end is the body of the corpus callosum it has a superior surface and inferior surface. The body has a superior surface and inferior surface. The superior surface 
is convex from before backwards okay this is the sagittal section and in sagittal section you can make out the superior surface of the body of the corpus callosum is convex from before backwards and concave from side to side this you can appreciate in the coronal section okay the body is the superior surface of the body is convex from before backwards and concave from side to side and this is related to the anterior cerebral artery and the lower border of fox cerebri fox cerebri is the dural fold which separates the two cerebral hemispheres and the superior surface of the body of the corpus callosum is related to the lower border of the fox cerebri and the anterior cerebral artery coming to the inferior surface the inferior surface is concave from before backwards and convex from side to side the inferior surface is concave from before backwards and convex from side to side it gives attachment to septum pellucidum this thin septum is septum pellucidum gives attachment to septum pellucidum and forms the roof of the lateral ventricle The splenium is the posterior end of corpus callosum and it is related to tela choroidea of the third ventricle inferiorly also the pineal body okay, it is related inferiorly to the tela choroidea of the third ventricle and pineal body superiorly it is related to the superior sagittal sinus which is a dural venous sinus and of course the fox cerebri posteriorly it is related to the great cerebral vein and striate sinus along with tentorium cerebelli Coming to the fibers within corpus callosum, there are four groups of fibers within corpus callosum. Number one is rostrum, which is present as the name suggests in the rostrum part of corpus callosum and connects the orbital surfaces of frontal lobes. The second one is forceps minor, which is present in the genu and connects the frontal lobes in order to connect the frontal lobes it makes a fork like shape that's why it is called forceps okay forceps minor present in the genu and connects the frontal lobes across the third one is forceps major again fork shape and connecting the two occipital lobes across and present in the splenium forceps major present in the splenium connecting the occipital lobes across and the final one is the tapetum present in the body and connecting the rest of the cerebral cortex the function of corpus callosum is coordination coordination between the two cerebral hemispheres coming to the clinical relevance the first thing you must know is about the split brain syndrome not the one depicted here in the picture as medical students with exams first approaching i know most of you will be undergoing this part of your brain asking you to read the other part pulling you towards spending time in internet or mobile you know i can understand but 
the split brain syndrome I am talking about is not the one depicted here, but the split brain syndrome you are discussing is the condition caused by the congenital absence or surgical section of corpus callosum. Yes, the corpus callosum can be congenitally absent and that condition is called split brain syndrome. The congenital absence or surgical section of corpus callosum is referred to as split brain syndrome and in this condition the patient is more or less normal in his day-to-day -day life. At a first look you cannot identify any abnormality in the patient but spatial tests of tactile and visual systems reveal that the patient responds like he is having two separate brains. Okay, there is no coordination between the two cerebral hemispheres and not in usual day-to-day -day life or in first look, but in spatial tests of tactile and visual systems, the patient responds like he is having two separate brains. And this condition is called the split brain syndrome. Monkeys with such conditions in experiments, if they are taught to do a task with one hand, they cannot repeat it with the other hand. The monkeys in experiments with such condition respond such a way that when they are taught a task, when they are taught to perform a task with one hand, they cannot repeat it with the other hand. That condition is called split brain syndrome. Coming to the other conditions, the lesions of anterior corpus callosum leads to conditions like akinetic mutism and tactile anomia. Akinetic mutism refers to the condition where the patient is unable to move and there is also no speech akinetic unable to move mutism no speech so akinetic mutism is a condition where the patient neither moves and there is no speech this is mostly by the associated frontal lobe damage. Okay. The patient here is alert. Okay. He is diverted by sound and his eyes may follow the observer. Okay. So he is alert but there is no movement and no speech. The patient is not paralyzed. He has the ability to move, but he doesn't have the will to move. Okay. So he is not paralyzed, but there is no will to move or speech, but the patient is alert. Tactile anomia refers to the condition where the patient can identify an object by touching it with one hand but he cannot identify the same object by touching with the other hand okay, that is called tactile anomia he cannot identify the object by touching with one hand the next is lesions of posterior corpus callosum and the lesions of posterior corpus callosum produces a condition called alexia without agraphia. Alexia refers to the inability to read. The alexia without agraphia is a condition where a patient can write something. Okay. He can write a sentence but when asked to read that sentence he cannot do it. He can write the sentence but he cannot read that sentence. It is alexia without agraphia. 
okay that's all about the clinical relevance with this we will end our topic on corpus callosum our next class will be on another important white matter of cerebrum the projection fiber that is the internal capsule so keep the channel subscribe and we'll meet in another video thanks for watching bye